I'm really happy. Oh, got it. Thank you, Tracy. We're really happy to be here. Um, as Tracy mentioned, I, I'm uh, with WSCCU. Uh, happy to do these trainings uh, in your school uh, for your organization, uh, wherever you'd like. As she mentioned, uh, pre-pandemic, I, I was very eager to to travel to schools. I enjoy uh, time uh, with students. Uh, I, I did see some people log on from, I, I believe, Melissa, West Seattle. I spent a lot of time there in my, in my youth. I would, uh, I'd love to make it up there in, in the center. I saw some people log on from there. So uh, my contact information will be at the end of this and at the end of the presentation, uh, or Tracy's uh, happy to hand it out. Um, feel free to contact me. I'm happy to do this uh, at your school or, or in any other setting. So with that, we'll, we'll get started today. We're going to talk about cryptocurrency, blockchain, and digital wallets. And Tracy, can um, can everyone, is my screen showing crypto, blockchain, digital wallets, B2B? Great. All right, so that's what we're gonna talk about today. If you are, uh, this is an introduction. So this is, uh, well, at the goal is at the end of this, if, um, if you were to, mm, I don't know, go, go to the water cooler and people are talking about crypto, uh, hopefully you'll have some input after this presentation. Um, what this is not is a, uh, is a guide to how to invest or how to get involved or how to make money off this stuff. This is an awareness and what's going on, NFTs, uh, a lot of cool buzzwords. So, and as Tracy mentioned, uh, um, I want this to be informative and empower you with, with knowledge. So any questions you have, please don't don't hesitate to ask or, or just we can stop and, and organically go back and forth. So with that being said, we'll move along and we're going to go over to the cryptocurrencies. Uh, blockchain is kind of the power behind cryptocurrencies. Um, it's going to power net, power the Internet of Things for, for as long as I can see. NFTs, what are those? Peer-to-peer uh, -peer payments. It's like Venmo, Cash App. What is a digital wallet? And uh, the risks and scams to be aware of in this new emerging digital and crypto world. So cryptocurrency, real easy. It's a form of payment. Uh, it can use to be purchased goods, just like a uh, dollar, just like the yen, uh, pound. Uh, it's not tied to any physical counterparts and only exists in electronic form. So it's just something that, that exists uh, on the internet. Uh, Bitcoin was the very first one. Um, created by Satoshi Nakamoto. This person's still unknown, lots and lots of theories. We can spend the rest of the hour going over theories of who this person is or who this group of people are. Uh, but it was started in 2009 with uh, a value of $0. 2011 was the first time it reached a dollar. Um, I, I believe it's, I don't know where it is today. I, I should have checked, I can check right now, but I believe it was over $60,000 this week. So it is, yeah, 50, it's down to 58,000 right now. Um, so Bitcoin is obviously the first most popular. Um, there's lots of popular coins now. So Bitcoin, uh, Ethereum, Bit, Binance coin, XRP, Dogecoin, uh, Polkadot. These are all, uh, they were the top 10 when we did this back in July. Um, Shiba Inu, and, and forgive me if I'm uh, not pronouncing that correct, but that's the latest hottest one. Uh, that was uh, that was developed, I believe, in August of 2020, and just these past few weeks, uh, it's gone up. I don't know, five or six hundred percent. So this is a rapidly uh, changing environment. Lots of new stuff. Lots of exciting things, and there's just lots coming at you. Um, so those are those are the most popular, but there's over eleven thousand. Uh, coins, digital currencies in existence. So that's uh, that's quite a lot. So it's value. This is an interesting one. Um, supply and demand is working for some cryptos, but uh, mostly depends on the popularity at any given time. Um, so there's some some influencers out there. Uh, Elon Musk, you know, he'll, he'll tweet about something. Dogecoin was was uh, was the real life example that I believe we used last time, um, but. Uh, just, just his influence, somebody's influence uh, can, can create demand. So it's just uh, yeah, popular at any given time, how easy, how convenient and it is to trade or use. The overall utility, so can it be used to buy things? We've seen more um, 
corporations, more large companies accepting Bitcoin or putting Bitcoin on their balance sheet. Uh, back to Elon, Tesla brought in Bitcoin. So you, for a time, you were able to buy cars for bit, with Bitcoin, but that stopped due to, well, he said he was worried about the environment. But um, yeah, there, there's there's lots of, uh, lot, it's, a, it's a rapidly changing environment. So um, it's the perceived value and the scarcity. So the demand uh, should exceed the supply for the, uh, for the coins to be valued. Um, for example, Bitcoin, there's a finance supply of Bitcoin. So once once 21 million Bitcoins are mined, which they have not all been mined yet, uh, that's it. There's no more Bitcoin. So um, there are some other cryptocurrencies that uh, aren't finite in, in their um, in their supply. So something to pay attention to. Um, so it's not the traditional metrics. Really. Was that was that a question there? Is that just computer gone goofy? I'll just take it as a computer. Act You're now. okay. I, I'm going to mute it. All right. So uh, blockchain technology and the value behind it. So all these cryptocurrencies are, are um, exist through the blockchain technology. And blockchain technology is very powerful. It's a digital ledger of transactions. It's constantly being duplicated, which makes it incredibly hard um, to hack. Um, it makes it very secure. Uh, it's a way of recording information and really hard for bad guys to get to it. So if, um, if you were here for, for any of the identity theft or, or uh, what can happen to your, your credit, um, blockchain is, is something that, um, that, that you can use to, to safeguard against or create, create more of a safeguard against uh, some of the bad guys out there. You have a question that's asking, how is cryptocurrency mined? Because you mentioned once it's all mined. Uh, yeah, so... Um, the, the reader, the, the short version of that, the direct answer, it's, a, it's, it's solving an incredible, um, incredibly difficult math, math equation. So that's, uh, that's how you mine it. You have, you have to solve this math equation. Um, now, that, that was really understated. They are very difficult. Um, it can take a whole lot of time, requires a lot of computing power. I don't know how to do it, um, but I... I know I know how to start doing it. I don't know how they actually solve the equations and do that, but it is solving a math equation. So, yeah, did that? Did that? Um, any any follow up to that one? Not that I see. Okay, yeah, because there are, there are some. Um, for example, you, you need certain processing power. You need certain hardware. Uh, you need a computer that can really really go. So, um, the value of blockchain. Um, is, is really the technology and it's uh it should it should save us all <laughs> some money in the long run but instead of the data being on a central server data is stored across a large network of computers it's constantly creating a more uh accurate uh, uh, excuse me a, a stronger defense um so the records are accurate blockchain is used for the secure transfer of items like money contracts so without having to use a third party intermediary intermediary or bank or government uh, the technology uh, increases security for these types of transactions also and it removes uh, it removes those third parties that are taking taking a piece of that pie so eventually our, our costs should go down um, one of one of the examples I, I like to use uh, is any uh, uh, if you ever had to wire money internationally um, there's a fee that goes along with that. It costs some money. Um, it could take some time or, or, or they, they could hold it for a day where we're using blockchain. Uh, it lowers the fee. I, I think it was uh, JP Morgan. It's going to cost them $1.81 to send money uh, across uh, the Atlantic as opposed to, I think it was $29. So um, yeah, drastically reducing costs, uh, expediting uh, the speed of things. And it's just Blockchain is going to be a part of our lives and, and really going to, going to run the Internet of Things in the future. So NFTs, you might have heard of these. Non-fungible uh, non fungible token is a digital asset, usually represents art, music, uh, in-game items, and videos. So in-game items are, um, if, if you like to play video games, uh, or, or any sort of game that where you're connected with other people over the Internet, there's the frequently bought using those. Um, a, lot, a lot of times cryptocurrencies used when um, in the purchase or exchange of NFTs, uh, generally one, one of a kind or limited runs. Um, 
And then uh, over 174 million has been spent on NFT since 2017. I know that number is more, not quite sure how. Um, some more on NFTs. This, this, this is what you're looking at right now is the most, uh, most, most expensive NFT ever sold. It was uh, almost $70 million paid, paid for in cryptocurrency. Um, and it's really just a, it's designed by the artist people. And, and this is a, a collage. This is, I, I describe it as a PDF and it's a collage of all of, of his life's work. And so what we're looking at, all of us right now, is the exact piece of art uh, that somebody bought with for, for $69 million. Uh, it just exists on their computer, like I said, like a PDF, just like we're looking at right now. Uh, but whoever bought that says, you know, they, they own the only digital copy, yet we can all look at it. So, um, you know, it's, um, it's a little bit of head scratching, but it's also, you know, really can't deny its popularity. Um, and, and although this is this is the example I'm using, most NFTs are, are under $200, which I believe I have a graph. Yes, there's a graph here. This is the NFT market data. This is uh, this was this is updated just uh, about eight weeks ago. So you can tell, uh, you know, that 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 green and blue circle account for more than half of the pie. And that's uh, the green circle represents zero to $100 purchase. And the blue is uh, 101 to $200. So over half the NFTs are, are purchased with a, with a sum of less than $200, which um, tells, you know, there's, there's a marketplace for that, that, uh, you know, it's, it's not a high hurdle to get into. So. Brian, can I ask you a question? So is there a, place where all of this art is like where it's all these nfts are is there a it says market data is there a marketplace that they go to electronically or how are they finding this because i don't even see i don't i don't even see it till it's on the news <laughs> um uh yes and yeah yes there are marketplaces um there there's lots of different ways that you can purchase an nft i, I believe the history of, of beeples was uh there was an auction, um, but yeah, there's marketplaces. There's uh, um, you'll have um, social media um, um, stars, you know. So so somebody has uh, maybe a lot of Instagram followers, a lot of Twitter followers, or, or whatever the social media platform is. Um, they can create some and, and sell them on there. Um, I, I, was, I was this was coming later. This is this has all happened since the last time we talked. But Twitter now has made it um, possible to where you can you can tip people, they call it tips, you can send them money um, in cryptocurrency. So uh, you can also you know, buy NFTs. So the, a lot of these uh, technology platforms are, are becoming payment services too. 